Good morning, children. I hope you've been enjoying these lessons and that you're ready for another one today. Micah, are you and your brothers in Fort Wayne, Indiana? Are you watching? Are those of you in San Diego ready for another lesson? I hope so. Well, let's begin today with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together with these children. We know that they're each precious in your sight. We pray that you would help them to listen well today and to remember any lessons that you would have them to learn. We pray all of this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Well, you probably remember that two weeks ago we talked about Jesus ascending into heaven. The disciples witnessed that. Now, before Jesus ascended into heaven, he told them to wait in Jerusalem until they had been baptized by the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're going to talk about today. It's an event that occurred 10 days after Jesus ascended into heaven, on a day that we know of as Pentecost Sunday. Now, churches throughout the world are celebrating Pentecost this very Sunday. So it must be a pretty important time in the church year. And when we talk about it in our lesson today, I think you'll see why it's so important and why churches celebrate it on this particular Sunday. So our lesson today is taken from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2. Acts was written by a man by the name of Luke, Luke was a traveling companion of St. Paul. And Luke begins by saying that the disciples, that Jesus' disciples, are all gathered together in one place on this particular Pentecost Sunday. Now, Pentecost was a Jewish festival, and it was celebrated 50 days after another Jewish festival, the celebration of the Passover. So that was what was going on in Jerusalem at this particular time. Many people were gathered there to celebrate Pentecost. Luke continues by telling us that these disciples who were gathered in this house all of a sudden heard this violent sound of a rushing wind. Not only that, even more amazing, they saw a fire from heaven come down and split into tongues of fire that landed on each of the disciples. So try to imagine this scene, the scene where the disciples were hearing this very loud, violent, rushing wind. I don't know if any of you have heard the sound of a violent wind before. Maybe some of you have heard Santa Ana winds that blow here in Southern California, especially in the mountains and in the desert. They can make a real loud sound. Also, these flames of fire that came down and alighted, presumably on the apostle's head, may have looked something like this. So do you have any idea what these tongues of fire or this rushing wind might have symbolized? Well, they symbolized the presence of the Holy Spirit, the third person in the Trinity. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And next week is Trinity Sunday, and we're going to be taking another look at what the Trinity is all about. So you'll probably want to watch that particular lesson also. So, these symbols of the Holy Spirit, when they occurred, the thing that was happening is that the disciples were being baptized by the Holy Spirit just like Jesus had told them they would be. And as soon as they were baptized by the Holy Spirit, something miraculous happened. They were able to speak in all of these different foreign languages, languages that they could never, never learn. They never learned them before, but yet they could speak in those particular languages. It would be something like you if you had a neighbor that was from Japan, and these neighbors could only speak Japanese. 
and all of a sudden one day you walked up to them and you were able to talk to them in Japanese, a language that you'd never learned before. So that may be something like what the disciples were experiencing after they'd been filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, as it turned out, it didn't take too long for the disciples to be able to use this new special gift that they received from the Holy Spirit. Because this sound that they had heard evidently was also heard in Jerusalem. Other people had heard it. People in Jerusalem that were celebrating the festival of Pentecost. And these people came from different nations in the world. Many of them uh, came from countries that spoke different languages. And they came out and a crowd gathered around the disciples to see what all this commotion was about. And you know what happened? They heard these disciples talking to them. And they were talking to them in their own languages, in their own native tongues. And they were truly, truly amazed. And what do you think the disciples were talking about? They weren't talking about the weather. They were talking about the mighty wonders of God. They were talking about Jesus and about what, what they knew about Jesus and his life with them and how he had died for their sins and how he rose and ascended into heaven, something that they had actually witnessed. So these people were truly amazed. Luke goes on to tell us that one of the disciples Simon Peter stood up, and he addressed the crowd. And he taught probably one of the best sermons has ever been recorded in the Bible. But it's a long sermon, and we're going to have to wait to another occasion to talk about it, because this lesson is pretty much over. But before we go, I wanted to stress the main points that I think are important in this particular lesson. First of all, Jesus told the disciples to wait for the baptism by the Holy Spirit, and that's exactly what they did. They followed Jesus' command, something that we should do. God, the things that God wants us to do, the things that Jesus told us to do are recorded in the Bible, aren't they? And we should follow those commands. Secondly, Jesus' promise came true, didn't it? Ten days after he ascended into heaven, the Holy Spirit showed up in the form of a tongue of fire and the sound of the rushing wind. So Jesus' promises always come true. After the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, been baptized by the Holy Spirit, we know that they were able to speak in different languages, languages that they had never heard before. Truly miraculous. Now, there's one more thing that I want to discuss with you, so listen up. And it starts with a question. Did you know that you have also been baptized by the Holy Spirit? And do you know when that happened? Well, it happened when you were baptized in church, when you were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, you weren't able to speak in all of these different languages once you were baptized, like the disciples could. However, when you were baptized, God put his seal of ownership on each one of you. When you were baptized, you became a child of God. And that's truly wonderful. Let's close with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the lesson today. We thank you for coming to these disciples, coming upon them so that they could tell people about Jesus. The message that they told people on that day has indeed spread throughout the world, and it's even come to us. And we're very thankful for that, and thank and praise you for that. Lord, we ask your blessings upon each of these children, we pray that you would bless the week ahead for them and bring us all together again next week. In Jesus' holy name, we pray these things. Amen. Well, I hope it's not too long before we can meet in person, but until then, 
we say goodbye.